What's up everyone, you're watching a Montu Motors video, and today we're going to talk about the Toyota Celica GT4. So the Celica GT4 was built in Toyota's Tahara plant in the Aichi Prefecture of Japan. It was manufactured from 1986 until 1999. It spanned three generations, starting with the ST165, followed by the ST185, and finally the ST205. All Celica GT4s were equipped with a version of Toyota's 3S GTE which is a 2-liter turbocharged motor. The power ranged anywhere from 182 horsepower up to 252 from the factory. All Celica GT4s were equipped with 5-speed manuals as well, and the enthusiast community collectively rejoiced. The Celica GT4 was originally built as a homologation special so Toyota could enter WRC. The Celica GT4's success in WRC actually preceded cars such as the Evo and the Impreza WRX. The first version of the Toyota Celica GT4 was called the ST165. This started production in 1986 and lasted until 1989. The 3S GTE in this car ranged anywhere from 182 horsepower up to 190 horsepower from the factory. The 5-speed manual transmission in this version was known as the E50F and was also matched to Toyota's 4-wheel drive system that also utilized a viscous coupling limited slip differential. There was a switch near the handbrake that actually allowed this car to go from a locked differential to an open differential, which is kind of neat. Visually, the original Celica GT4 wasn't that distinguishable from its mainstream versions. The biggest difference was that it had larger openings in the front bumper. However, in 1987 it received an update where it got a whole new grille, new taillights, and alloy wheels. There was a version sold in 1988 in North America that was known as the Alltrack Turbo. These received new side skirts in addition to Raleigh inspired dual fog lights. Starting production in 1989 and lasting until 1993, Toyota developed its second generation Celica GT4, or the ST185. There were some mechanical changes made to the vehicle, such as a ceramic CT26 turbo, a new air to air intercooler, and Toyota even added a more aggressive ignition system that bumped power up to 222 horsepower. The viscous coupling limited slip differential was still available from the ST165, however some models were now equipped with a Torsen rear differential as well. There were three transmissions available in the ST185, all of them 5 speeds. There was the E150F that had a 4.285 final drive ratio and was installed in the Japanese market car and also the US's Alltrack. There was the E151F that had a final drive ratio of 3.933. This was available on the European and Australian market cars. Then there was the E152F, which was available on the Japanese market only GT4 Rally. This had a close gear ratio on the first through fourth, and had a final drive ratio of 4.285. There were even some new options that were available on the ST185, such as ABS, leather interior, a sunroof, and even a 10-speaker premium sound system. There were other luxury features available for this car as well, such as the power-operated driver's seat, auto-tilt steering wheel, airbags, and even cruise control as standard equipment. A new version of the GT4 based off the rally car, called the GT4 RC, was developed in 1991. It had some new features such as a water-to-air intercooler instead of the standard air-to-air, -air, which was more effective for aggressive driving. The transmissions had a triple cone synchro mesh on gears 2 and 3, up from a double cone. Then cosmetically it had different bumpers that were lighter and had more openings in the standard. Only 5,000 units of the GT4 RC were produced. Finally, starting production in 1994 and lasting until 1999, Toyota released their third generation Celica GT4 or the ST205. The 3S GTE was now making 252 horsepower courtesy of a CT20B turbocharger. This was the most powerful Celica ever produced. The final Celica GT4 was also slightly larger than the outgoing ST185, however weighed about the same due to some weight saving features such as an all aluminum hood. Toyota also developed the closest thing they've ever released to their true rally car in the form of the GT4 WRC. Only 2500 were built, and the neat thing about this was it actually incorporated all the plumbing for their anti-lag system. So a little history about that, the anti-lag system was basically pioneered for use on rally cars in the ST165. And essentially the way the system works is when a car is getting ready to launch, in order to keep the turbocharger spooling, it places the air-fuel mixture in the exhaust duct after the engine and before the turbocharger, and then ignites it so essentially their turbocharger is going to keep spinning, so you'll have boost even before you launch. I'm sure if many of you have been to a car show, you've probably seen the guy revving the car up, and flames would start spitting from it. It sounds like more or less a machine gun going off, 
Anybody with PTSD probably will hate somebody who has an anti-lag system on their car. However, if used appropriately, it's a very effective system to get a fast launch off the line. There are also a few extra systems in the WRC, such as a water spray bar and a pump for the front intercooler, as well as a basic water injection system. The rear spoiler on the ST205 is definitely a love it or hate it piece, but it was a two-piece design that was actually mounted on risers. There were a few slight updates to the ST205 during its life cycle, such as in 1995 where it received new six-spoke wheels, in addition to new side skirts and rocker panels. In 1996, ABS became a standard feature on all ST205 GT4. So a little side note about the Celica GT4. The newest one available for import is the ST185, as the ST205 won't be available until 2019. We actually had an ST185 at Montu some time ago, and it was a really cool car. It's a great alternative to anybody who's looking at a Nissan Pulsar GTIR or a Mitsubishi Galant VR4, as it offers a similar drivetrain setup. And with 222 horsepower on tap, it's a decently quick car. If you took it to the drag strip and raced somebody with, say, a newer Golf GTI, you could easily pull from them from a launch due to your all-wheel drive advantage. And even if you're going from a roll through gears, you can easily keep up or beat it depending on whether or not it's tuned. It's almost a shame Toyota didn't make a GT4 for the newest version of the Celica that was released. It was kind of a letdown to find out that they had no real performance version for that car, considering that they spent the most amount of time designing it to look fast, and even had that commercial where they were talking about how fast it looks but it didn't have any of the guts to make that car actually fast. What a shame. Such a wasted potential. At the moment, Toyota doesn't have any plans to bring back the Celica name. But we'll see, maybe someday in the future they'll bring it back as some sort of retro or throwback model. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot about the Celica GT4. If you're interested in importing an SD165 or ST185, you can always email us at sales at montumotors.com. Again, thank you for watching this video, and have a good one. I would definitely recommend Monty Motors. And I would definitely go through Monty Motors again and again. Registration, insurance, all that stuff, but at the end of the day, they took care of every fear you could possibly have. They'll be able to answer it right on the spot. That was a ridiculously simple process for getting a JDM car. I couldn't be happier with my purchase from Matsu Motors.